Now that we have our value scale, let's use this to help us create the illusion of form on our canvas by imagining a simple still life. If you don't already have it open, I'm going to click on my layers palette and the icon is located here at the top of the screen. Click the plus icon and open up a new palette, a new layer I should say. I'm going to click on my felt tip brush and I'm going to start sketching some simple geometry. I'm going to create some simple forms. If you select the wrong color at any point, don't be afraid to just hit option and choose the color you want or grab it from your color palette. I'm just drawing some simple forms in, in perspective blocking out a box. I'll use my additive and subtractive techniques to make this shape more interesting. Additive meaning I'm adding more geometry and subtractive meaning in a second I'll carve away. That may be or actually I'll do it on this side so it's a little more visible and I'll imagine that there is a piece cut away from this box the perspective isn't perfect that's okay for now and now that we have our rough block in I'll use my eraser tool here to erase some of my unwanted lines. That's, this is the hard eraser tool here on the left hand side, not the soft eraser. And I'll just get rid of some of this. I'll go back to my pencil, I mean my felt pen, and adjust some of my lines. Also, holding shift while dragging down will straighten out will help you cre to create straight lines. Again, I'm selecting my eraser to clean up some of this mess. And now that I have this rough idea of my geometry, I'm going to add a new layer on top of this and I'm going to use my airbrush I'm going to select a very large brush and I'm adjusting my brush by hitting the brackets on the keyboard left and right left for making it smaller and right for enlarging it you'll see the size change here in the brush properties menu and I'm going to paint a general tone over the entire the entire geometry I'm doing this so that I can cover a lot of ground and I don't see a lot of brush strokes in my work. I'll clean up the excess paint a little later on. I'm also going to choose one of my lighter uh, values and I'm going to decide which which part of my geometry is receiving the most direct light. So I'm gonna pretend that it's coming from over here. I'll pick something darker. To show you and I'll pick my one of my lighter tones again I'll adjust my airbrush and I'm on the same layer and I'm gonna paint in one of my planes to be receiving the more direct light I'm also gonna select one of my darker tones and I'm gonna paint the sides that I know aren't getting much light at all a bit darker. Again, I'm using a large brush so I don't have too many visible brush strokes. I will get smaller to help create some of these smaller shadows. I know where these joints meet. It'll be a little darker. I also know that this top elevation of my Geometry will cast shadow on some of this lower elevation, so I will 
create that as well. And I'm constantly toggling my brush size, uh, trying to use as large a brush for as long as possible. I will go back here, pick my lighter tone, and adjust. And as you can see, my original line art is disappearing behind the levels of paint that I'm adding. I am undoing whenever I feel like it's getting away from me. And to help make this a little clearer, I'll use my hard erase brush again. And I will use a large brush while I can and get rid of some of these areas. I will be adding a cast shadow on a separate layer for this geometry, so I'm going to erase all of the excess paint that is not inside of my shape. Toggling my size to get the corners. Also, you can use a small size to immediately get close to the outline and then you can get a larger brush and be a little less careful. I'll hold down space and drag on the outer circle to make that visible. And as you can see my geometry has already a lot of tone. Um, but what would make this more convincing is to give it a bit more, uh, pay attention to a bit more detail. I'm going to use my lighter tones to bring out some of the hard edges where the light would hit the strongest. I'm using my airbrush located here at the top right and I have my size very small and my flow is not even about halfway. I'm also going to use this same tone and increase my brush size dramatically and again kind of paint in here and give a variation to uh, this plane here so that it looks like there is some direct light hitting one area and it is falling off and diffusing. Also there will be some light at the top being that it's coming from above. And I'm going to say the light is closest probably to the corner. So I will make this area have the lightest value. And as the light gets away, it will diffuse or fall off. And now that I have a general shape that I like, if I am on the top layer and I hit Command E on my keyboard, it'll merge both my line R and my value together. I'll again select my eraser tool, and this time I'll do something a little different. I'll first I'll scale my brush down with my brackets, and notice here I have my free tool selected, and that allows me the freedom to erase however I like. But I want to select my line tool and click and drag so that I get a clean, perfectly straight line. And just be careful if you don't get the result you like, you can just undo. And I just like to go gradually and erase just a little piece at a time. Don't forget when you're done with this, to click back on your free tool so that you can erase freely. We have some artifacts on our other layer so I'm just going to select it and erase those quickly and go back to my geometry. Maybe I'll cut that bottom piece off and get a little more shallow, shallow here. You can also 
click this lock icon on your layer and lock your transparent pickle pixels so that when you do paint back in it will only work inside of the lines and not outside so I can go in here and select my darkest tone and really get in here where it would be the most shadow and just darken that up a bit also now I'll click my new layer icon and here at the top right of that I can click on these arrows and drag that behind my geometry and I'll get a big brush again my airbrush and increase the size of my brackets and I'll use this to start painting in a cast shadow of my actual object the closer you are to the object that's be that's casting the shadow it'll get a little darker and then again it'll fall off as it gets away I'll use my soft erase to get rid of anything I don't want I did a little too much so I undid and I'll just re-erase some of that and just be careful you don't lose anything you don't want to And this is a really simple way to show value using a geometric form. This is a hard surface form, meaning it has, has hard angles. And I'll just do a bit more cleanup. I'll use my chisel marker, marker tool and select this tone here. Make sure I'm in my proper layer. And maybe figure out which is the best line to clean up, it looks like over here. Also, I like to use my pencil for finishing details. And use my lightest value to really punch up my edges. I'm using shift and dragging down left or right when I want a perfectly horizontal or ver vertical line. And here is our geometric shape using value. I'll take the lessons that I've used in making both our value scale and making this geometry to make one last piece of art and we'll make a, a simple house and we'll show how to create value with, with using a little bit of color as well.